This is Blurring the Lines with Adam Bell and Peter Nicolaitis, IT entrepreneurs. Adam and Peter take on the topics of technology, business, life, and the pursuit of happiness and blur them together in the 21st century. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good wherever it is, whenever it is. Um, it just so happens today that we are doing Blurring the Lines podcast episode number 96 at the beach. And while I may be at the beach, jo- joining me as always is Peter, my co-host. <laughs> How you doing, Peter? Peter Nicolaitis. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, the beach has got me all off kilter today. <laughs> <laughs> it has that effect on people, man. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? So I'm going to... So I'm just I'll, uh, for, for our recording video, so I'm staying in Perdido Key. And Perdido Key is uh, down near Pensacola, and it's on a little... Um, is it an Ismuth where it's water on three sides? And, you know, so it runs out to a lake. That was a peninsula. A peninsula. What's the difference between a peninsula and an isthmus? I'm remember. sure we'll get so, listener feedback telling us. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so we're out there. So we've got water on, on both sides of us. Uh, but we've got a lot of, like, preserve behind us. So if we look up here we're looking at the backside. So that is back towards the mainland. So there's water in between us and then the mainland. And then we go out here and we got nothing but ocean. Whoop, there, there. Nothing but there ocean. Shot. Nothing but ocean. Nothing so, but ocean. Nice. It's, it's pretty ugly, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible. It looks, it reminds me of when I was in lower Alabama last year. Yeah. When you were in LA. So let's, let's, let's hear this. Hey, this word. is a narrow piece of land connecting two larger areas across an expansive water by which they are otherwise separated. Did that come through? I caught most of it. Okay, hang on. But... Let's try one more time. What is an isthmus? I just realized I said it wrong. It's <laughs> isthmus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is an isthmus? She's You're not talking. to say the A word. You didn't yeah, say the A well, word. But I was asking Siri. Oh, anyway, okay. and it's, it, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Four, four, um, four uh, consonants all in a row there. Isthmus. Yeah. Uh, and isthmus is a narrow piece of land connecting two larger areas across an expanse oh. of water by which they are otherwise separated. Okay, so, it's so a, this it's, is. It's a land bridge. The land bridge. So this yeah. is not an isthmus. No, you're on a peninsula. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact. See, this is an educational <laughs> podcast now. Yeah. Change our, our educational moment. Put, put us under education for the next episode. <laughs> not just entertainment. We're edutainment. Edutainment. Beautiful. <laughs> so uh, what's going on now? We uh, So you're on vacation, but this is a working vacation, right? Uh, hopefully not too much work. No, I mean, I came down yesterday, uh, really with the intent of having a little mini vacation. Uh, but I, I thought, well, Hey, let's do the podcast. I mean, I, I, I did some correspondence, but I wasn't planning on working. So this was su- supposed to be really a good four days off. Mm-hmm. So I don't really consider this to be work. Okay. Good for you, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sweet. All right. Well, um, cool. Well, well, what should we do? Let's dive right in, man. What are we doing? Yep. All right. So we've got a couple of things. So of course, this weekend is Memorial weekend. Uh, you know, so we've all got Monday off. Are you doing anything special for Memorial uh, weekend? Yep. Uh, lady has proposed that we go for a hike. Okay. I've been seeing this girl fairly regularly now for some time, and um, we've not done, we've worked out together in the gym a few times, but we haven't like done her thing or my thing. Like she hasn't come to my Krav Maga classes and, you know, or, you know, well, she she took one of my yoga classes, Um, but um, she hasn't been like running or on a bike ride with me and her thing is hiking. Okay. So we're planning a hike and it looks like it's going to be like a four, four and a half thousand foot, you know, 
hike of some sort. But uh, nice. we're looking at a, at a mountain up in Lincoln, New Hampshire, which is way up in the north. We're like maybe an hour south of the Canadian border. Okay. And um, I was planning it out, you know, because I always, whenever we look at trips to the Arctic North, I always want to look at, see what the Tesla and the char supercharging situation looks like. <laughs> yeah. And they, they had me going, it's like, yep, go all the way up, make a stop in Hooksett, New Hampshire, where I normally charge for all points north and then um, go up to Lincoln and then drive back home. And I'm like, well, you, where do I stop and charge along the way? Turns out there's a supercharger in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Oh, well, cool. <laughs> so I was like, perfect. There's a destination right there. <laughs> Absolutely, let's go do that hike. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that sounds like fun. So well, cool. I haven't done a hike in a long time. So mm -hmm. that'll, be, that'll be interesting. Well, my wife likes to hike, so. And that's a, a, that's a good thing. And you can, well, and hiking is a very healthy thing. I mean, other than like extreme hiking, that that's something you can do pretty much your whole life. Yeah. As long as you stay like, in decent shape. It's walking, man. <laughs> yeah. Walking up hills. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, yeah. Of, speaking of walking, um, I've been running more lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw the numbers on there. Yeah, so normally, like, you know, inclement weather and schedule uh, permitting, um, and that's only, it's only stopped me twice now. Um, every other day, I've been doing a five miler. And as of yesterday, I did five and a half. So I'm gradually edging it up. But then, you know, lately, I've just like, all right, now I'm taking bigger bounds. So yeah. I took the month of April. I wrote a blog post about this on my website too, on nicolaitis.com, how I went from, uh, you know, like zero to couch to 5K and then 5K yeah. to five miles and stuff. Um, but now I'm, I'm, you know, my next target is 10K. So it's going to be like 6.22 miles, I think. And I, uh, which is only- I think you're ready for a half marathon, really. Because... Well, if I, if, uh, yeah, well, go on. Well, because in the training regiment, you know, about six miles is about all they really run in preparation for mm -hmm. the for the the half marathon. Very rarely do people actually run the full half marathon as part of their training. Interesting. Yeah, you might be right, but but I'm not technically training for a marathon. I'm just getting out there to get exercise. Mm -hmm. So you know, but yeah, my my neighbors keep on saying, "When are you going to run the marathon?" I was like. Wasn't really on my radar, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just happened, didn't it? I mean, it was in uh, April, the Boston right? Boston Marathon is on uh, April fifteenth. It's Tax Day, yeah. Patriots Day. Yep. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. So well, you don't have to do it this year, but you could do it next year. You know, I probably could. I don't know that I want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if I if I wanted to, I'm feeling confident enough that I could probably do that. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, I've been doing like five miles every other day and then I just started to just ratchet it up a little. I went, to, I did five and a quarter a couple times and then yesterday I did five and a half. I think, you know, again, it's schedule permitting because these things start to take time because uh, yeah. you know, I'm averaging a little under 10 minutes a mile. So you think about that. If I do six miles, that's an hour. Uh, you know, so it's like, all right, well, I got a lunch break here or, you know, there or whatnot. Um, but it's fun. It's fun. So, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it and I feel great afterwards. I mean, you know, like the first couple of miles really suck. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then usually the last mile is kind of like, Oh, is it over yet? Um, mm -hmm. that really just goes to show how much like, you know, your mind plays with it because mm -hmm. the last mile used to suck when I was running three miles. Well, now when I'm doing three miles, I'm like, all right, I'm about halfway done. Okay. You know, and, but, but now it's <laughs> yeah. mile four and five that are sucking where it used to be mile two to three. So mm -hmm. you're, it's, it's mental. So. Yep. You're, you're moving forward. Yes. Sir. So, <laughs> but that's fun. I'm like, I'm enjoying it. And I'm back to jujitsu. I went back to uh, jujitsu this uh, past Saturday and I'm planning again tomorrow. So taking it really easy, but the shoulder is on the mm -hmm. mend. So, yeah. yeah, so, so physical, physical health on, on, on the Peter front seems to be doing pretty well. <laughs> How about cool. you? <laughs> yeah, I'm also doing well. I've got a little bit of a shoulder tweak, uh, but I've been, 
I've been caring for it. Um, is you know, it was really an old injury that it, we were doing something that I never do, and it's cleans, uh, hanging cleans, where you clean from the knee up to here. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. I kind of hurt that in college. And it hasn't bothered me in a long time, but we had a workout where we did a whole set of just hanging cleans and I did a heavier weight and it kind of irritated that shoulder. It's kind of like a, a tendonitis kind of pain. It's mm. not like, you know, it just, you know, it, once it kind of gets inflamed, it's kind of irritated for a couple of weeks. So I've been yeah. taking it easy, but for the most part, I'm doing well. My back's in good shape. Uh, CrossFit's moving and yoga doing a combination of crossfit and yoga that's keeping me going forward that's a great combo so speaking of <laughs> yoga we had um the second to final component for my 500 hour or my 300 hour training my additive one uh -huh. had that today where we uh, reviewed those uh videos that we did yeah. um so I think it's safe to post those now too. We can, uh, you know, post those online. There, there weren't, weren't a lot of, uh, you know, wasn't a lot of crit critique. I should actually get uh, the, the, my, my demonstration students uh, permission before we, we do that. But, okay. um, but um, yeah, it was fairly well received. Some good, you know, they, they call it constructive criticism. And I need to look that up because I was told by someone once that you can't do constructive criticism. Um, you can give constructive feedback but criticism is an expression of disapproval based on perceived faults or mistakes. Um, and so I guess, you know, someone's personality, it was on an old podcast back in the day called Manager Tools, the Manager Tools mm -hmm. podcast, which was really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, they said, no, you can give someone constructive feedback, but you can't give constructive criticism because criticism by nature is... Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like you're, you're tearing down or you're, you know, you're, you're saying it's bad and, and, you know, so you can't build on that or something. So, yeah. so I, I don't know if, you know, I, I, I prefer like, you know, constructive feedback anyway, because that's, that's really what we're doing. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, got some good feedback. Uh, there were a couple of things that were a little bit nitpicky, uh, but we didn't have a lot of time to go into it because we were mm -hmm. reviewing a lot of, you know, material for five different students and we only had 90 minutes. Um, so, um, but we we're allowed to, you know, keep the dialogue going on and, you know, on, uh, in by email. So I sent a follow up email and just was like, yeah, not sure. You know, like one of the, one of the things was like, you know, well, you shouldn't call this pose simple. And I was like, okay, but relative to other poses, it, it kind of is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could argue that, you know, but, but if, if, because the, the argument was like, well, it's, it's just, it's a forward fold the caterpillar pose, right? Where you just, you know, like fold forward. Yeah. Simple. Described uh, <laughs> like that, it, I think it's pretty simple, right? Compared yeah. to a cat pulling its tail where, you know, like my, one of my favorite teachers likes to cue it as, you know, lie on your back, roll onto your side, prop your head up with your, in your hand, like you're reading a magazine, swing your top leg forward and bring your back leg back and then grab it optionally with a bind. And if you like, you can let the hand, the head rest and stretch the arm out and then roll onto your back for a twist. Could, could you start over? Cause I, you lost me at <laughs> I'm saying so, so again, relative now, you know, relative one to yeah. the other, one seems kind of simple, right? So like, why is it bad to say that? And, and then there was also more talk about um, verbiage around uh, whether it's okay or not, you know, to, you know, we don't want to put people who have a lot of range of motion up on a pedestal because that's not, you know, the goal so much. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, some styles and some schools, you know, they, they worship range of motion. And, you know, if you can't like, you know, take your back foot up to the back of your head and, you know, do all these fancy things, you're then a, you're not you're doing a it. lesser student. Yeah, exactly. And that's totally not the case. That said, I'm not sure that just referring to like tight hamstrings or tight hips is a bad thing. No, right. No. You know, so it's like, I have tight hamstrings and tight hips and that affects the way I come into poses, but I'm not sure. 
you know, I don't, I don't take that as demeaning, <laughs> you know, so that's, yeah. you know, anyway, so this is just interesting things because, you know, we obviously want to be sensitive to our students and things that, you know, but you also like, words have meaning, we, we use them for reasons, so, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's a good, it's a good interesting, interesting ongoing discussion that we're having. So, so to, to give you a, a testimonial <laughs> for, for Caterpillar, uh, you know, that for me, that, that is actually a hard pose for me. I'm not very, I am, you wouldn't point to me and say, this is an extra flexible guy. You know, I wouldn't be put up on the pedestal, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, uh, I've heard, I've heard it said that, you know, this is one of the, that that is one of the top four yoga poses. And it, you know, it doesn't really seem that very hard. I mean, cause it's not a hard position to get into. I harder position to do correctly and focus properly it's not it's not completely you know it there it's not like there's nothing to it there are things to it right and and again it you know definition is Im, Im, important here we're not saying it's easy yeah right yeah, it's because difficult. I, I mean most think would, would you agree that most marketing campaigns are fairly simple the oh, stuff yeah. you need to do it's simple yeah stuff you need to do is it easy to do all the stuff you need to do? No. No, right? You know, so, so easy and simple are not the same thing. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I again, I'll, I, and I, you know, clarified, I'm talking about like, you know, simple in terms of expressing mm -hmm. the pose, uh, it coming into the pose, explaining it, the target yeah. areas. Well, you know, what are the, you know, oversimplifying perhaps, you could say, what's the target area of Caterpillar? The back lines of the body. Mm -hmm. Done. But, you know, <laughs> so it's it's so, so, from my perspective. Yeah. yeah. So, but going back to the testimony on that, I started doing that uh, as part of trying to work out some of the knots in my shoulders, mm. and just doing that pose. At, you know, I was doing other poses, but adding that one in there has loosened up my shoulders because uh, what I was concerned about is I was getting numbness in my thumb. I was having mm. numbness in my thumb. And the numbness has now spread to my index finger and my thumb. So I'm like, okay, well, I can't, I, I can't have surgery or anything like that before I go to Mexico. I've, you know, I've got to do my Mexico trip. When I come back, I'll go to the doctor on that. So I started doing that pose and the numbness is going away after doing that stretching and the relaxing from my neck because leaning oh, okay. my neck forward is yeah. so is something that I just don't do. I don't put my chin down. Huh. And uh, it has really helped relieve the stress in my shoulders by doing that pose and focusing on getting my chin to my chest. And uh, so the numbness, the numbness in my index finger is almost completely gone. And I can still sense it slightly in my thumb. And it's less than it's been in a really long time. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm really wondering because my father has uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and his doctor has just recommended that he go in for surgery on that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, geez, I've, I'm wondering that too. You say getting your chin to the chest. Now, are you doing this in a yin style or? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so you, it's maybe you're more like letting your chin to your chest. Yes. It, it, it doesn't, it, it I'm leading it towards it and it eventually <laughs> I, I'm not even like like I can't even like hit my you know I can't get like this is straight up I'm probably like this mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. but yeah. I'm better than I was and at the end of like three or four minutes I've been able to relax a little further and a little further yeah uh, and yeah. when I start off I can't I can barely get my chin down at all but mm -hmm. after a few minutes, it'll, I'll start relaxing and it'll yep. start, it starts working out. So, and, and yeah. where, when you, when you're in that pose, when you're just holding it, where are you feeling the tension? Um, I feel the tension. In the back of the neck. Yep. You just went mute. Am I Here back? We, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. When I pointed at my, when I pointed at my neck, I hit my Click. headset. Yep. Yeah. Like right there in the backs of my neck and then yep. down to the middle of the shoulders. Yep. That's where I feel that tension. And 
specifically for me, my left side, and that's where the numbness is in my left fingers, Very is I really feel the tension there when I lean forward. Very um, interesting. But I've also known for a long time that I carry my tension there, like yeah. my stress levels. Yeah. And I also did some mental things to like help as well. I acknowledged one that I was under stress. <laughs> and then what could I do to release the stress? And then I, you know, kind of also looked at what's the big deal here? You know, let's put this all in perspective. And then, uh, then the stress levels kind of came down too. So it's kind of a combination of things, Yep. but the stretching has helped me the most as well as stress relieving. Yoga for the win. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. What's next? Okay, so this, uh, regarding CrossFit, so this weekend, Memorial Weekend, is the hero workouts. We've talked about the hero workouts before. Yes. You know, so uh, this weekend is Murph, and I forget, uh, I forget the guy, I think it's Ryan Murphy. I hope that I'm right on that. Uh, but this weekend is a, a Monday, is a, and most people wear a 20-pound vest, like the, the tactical vest. So wow. wear the best. They'll do a one mile run and then they'll come back and do a hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, three hundred air squats, and do another one mile run. Boy. Yeah, it takes about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a workout. Yeah, it's a serious workout. So I think Ashlyn and I, well, because we've done it already. I mean, we've done it before, but um, I think. We're going, if we can find somewhere to do pull-ups, then I think we're going to split it in half and do it on Sunday. So, but I haven't seen anywhere here that I can do pull-ups. You can just hang right off your uh, balcony. Woo! <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm very motivated to hang tight. <laughs> Maybe start on a lower floor. <laughs> yeah. We're on the 13th floor. Well, yeah, yeah. it. It wouldn't be maiming. I mean, it, yeah. at least, I, you know, the good thing is if you fail, you're not going to suffer for it. Yeah, you're not going to suffer, and you won't feel bad about the results. You know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. But, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. So, so we'll go. Cool. All right. So, what else we got? So, so last week we talked about – well, I got last podcast, not last week, because we had a little gap there. Uh, but the last podcast, I didn't know how to turn off my iPad other than going through the software. And you sent me a text message saying, hey, check out the iPad guide. And I'm like, okay, what am I looking for? How to turn it off? Oh, well, that's real obvious. You <laughs> press the up arrow on the volume, the down arrow on the volume, then you press the power. And then you'll have the option to shut it down. I, I mean, I don't know how I didn't guess that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was feedback from a listener uh, and friend of the show, Scott Wilsey. He was the one who sent me the, um, the article, the, the how-to guides. And um, he's, he's, he's pointed those out to me on occasion, too. You know, Apple publishes these uh, you know, user manuals for all their stuff as iBooks. So you can just mm -hmm. get them right out of the, um, the Apple bookstore. So, uh, yeah, I, but that reminds me back in the day, I remember having a discussion with my graphic designer because he is always, you know, always is and always will be a Mac guy and, you know, never Windows or anything. And um, he was always saying things, oh, the Macs are so simple, you know, it works the way I expect it to. And I never understand why you have multiple mouse buttons, you know, like, why would I want to clutter my brain having to remember which click to do left or right? And I said, <laughs> so you'd rather have to remember whether it's a control click or an option click or a command click or a shift click or a command shift click or a command option click or a command alt click or an alt option click. And he's like, good point. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so i mean you know i i thought it was pretty easy when you just you know press and hold the power button makes sense to me so yeah you know, when you start getting rid of buttons 
you have to overload functionality. That's the only option you have if, if you've decided you're going to get rid of buttons. And apparently Steve Jobs had this thing against buttons. So, Yeah, he had a, uh, he had a phobia of buttons, which is so kind of weird. So I've been told, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't really bother me, though. I mean, I do like, uh, I do not like the Mac. Buttons? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of buttons. But, <laughs> but I actually don't mind the Mac's limited buttons and things like that but yeah you know i need to take a screenshot control alternate shift four <laughs> or okay. five now it's five yeah yeah, yeah there's are... four there's a, a five a four and a three and they all yeah. do different kind of functions exactly lots of different screenshots <laughs> <laughs> i do like though you know and it makes sense now because no, uh, no Mac comes with any manual or anything. You know, my iPad. It's I bought this in the bookstore. It's in the bookstore. So that is pretty slick, though. You go to the bookstore, you download it, and it's got it. And I mean, and, you know, it's like online manuals. It's so much smarter than printing a book, because if there's a mistake, they can go straight into the bookstore and update the book, mm -hmm. or update the web page for you automatically. Or if there's an update to that that model, well, you. You know, we got a lot of feedback that up, down, power was a bad idea for power. We're just switching it back to power. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Done. Done. Yeah. And there's other things like release notes for the software, you know, knowledge base articles. There's all kinds of different places where you can look for stuff. But we're, you know, I would say I'm not alone that we're, we're getting conditioned to just, you know, we expect things to just work. You know, yeah. you, if you have to read the manual for stuff, I mean, and this, I think, has been a prevailing attitude for a long time. Is, and again, my friend who's the graphic designer said, you know, like, if I have to read a manual to figure out how to use a piece of software, then it's too complicated. <laughs> of course, I mean, he was like a Photoshop guru for the longest time. Like, you can't tell me that you just figured out how to use Photoshop. No. No, Photoshop yeah. is a pain in the rear. Just to, just to crop a picture, it is way harder to do in Photoshop than it is in every other program. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> there you go. But you know what? When I was choosing which device I was going to use to do the podcast today, I chose my iPad because I knew it would be simpler and I knew it would be more reliable than running it on my laptop. Probably, they, they you know they, they do tend to work. Just, mm -hmm. just just don't try to turn it off. Yeah, I can't. I cannot turn it off. <laughs> All right, shall we move on? Yes, sir. Well, I have been told on good for a uh, good authority that um, Paradigm Consulting is in the top ten IT healthcare IT service providers for 2019. You know, I also heard that. My email came from healthcaretechoutlook.com. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was told that uh, my friend Andrew Smith, whose email address is andrew.f at healthcaretechoutlook.com. I'm not sure how that lines up, but sure. <laughs> Um, he told me, I hope he, he hoped I was having a good day. Um, this Outlook magazine has culminated a unique print platform, new way to understand the latest, ha latest happenings, healthcare, yada, yada, yada. Here's a link to the section where I thought leaders and healthcare professionals would voice their opinions. Uh, we've worked with companies like a bunch that I've never heard of. Uh, we'd like to show you how Paradigm is a leader. And uh, the cost of this reprint branding package is only $3,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a bargain. Yeah. Did you get, yeah. they did you get two right of up. them? Uh, well, <laughs> wait for it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. We're not done. I also got an email from Elena D'Souza, whose email address, again, elena.t at cioreview.com. So Elena, Elena D apostrophe Souza, but email Elena T. I'm seeing a pattern here. Hi, Peter, hope you're doing well. Uh, earlier, I sent you a note about the forthcoming annual election of enterprise security, and we have shortlisted Paradigm Consulting to be part of this edition. 
Uh, this award recognizes companies who have stood out among enterprise security solution providers. 20 honorees in the next generation of excellence in their security, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Please let me know if you'd be interested in participating. But <laughs> she doesn't give me a price. Oh, wait a minute. I take that back. Let me, let me scroll down. We so it's the exact same. I didn't even catch this earlier because um, the cost and printing of a rebranding package is $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what we've got going on here is a very coordinated spam or scam campaign, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's the same format. We've got first name, last initial, which does not match up with the last name uh you know just very very similar very interesting and um very not deserving of my money no so speaking of scams so i've been getting um a phone call from an 800 number and you know did you just get a call no not just not just now but oh, cause, today cause, i have cause... Because you picked up your phone to look at it while I received a phone call. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> I thought for a second you were calling me. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so I've been getting a phone call from a 800 number, 08200, and then 2213. But I've been getting it from 800 072 2213, 092 2213, 03. Yeah, you know, so there's a pattern there of numbers that they have purchased, but they, Apparently, and I don't know, I, I heard somebody say this, so I don't know that it's true, that if you call them back and they pick up, they can reverse the charge on you for long distance. I didn't even think that was possible anymore. I thought that was a really old scam. Well, there are, um, there are overseas 900 number equivalents. Mm -hmm. And, you. you know, which, which if you call, you start paying. So okay. that's one thing, but um, I mean, phone scams is just such a huge thing these days that even, even Ajit Pai wants to do something about it. So, I mean, it must be bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I got a call from the social security department from South Dakota telling me that my social security number had been compromised and it was a robot calling to tell me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and again, that's, yeah, the classic, you know, scams and stuff. I mean, yeah, the social security administration is not calling you. They did not, you know, your, your social security number has not been suspended. Believe me. It's, you know. <laughs> and uh. I do have insurance fraud protection. So. Oh, well, in that case, call them up and give it to them. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> So you talk, you know, talking about LifeLock, you know that dude who used to oh, yeah. drive around. With, so, you know, the dude whose account had, got hacked, hacked, and all his uh, information. Oh, leaked. yeah, yeah, he's had his. I want to say that his identity has been stolen six times, but <laughs> he has been able to, you know, it's like a challenge. I mean, you know, hacker, you you tell all the hacker, all the smart hackers in the world, you're not going to hack me. Right. You know, it's like, oh, game on, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what they did. So his has been compromised a number of times. But in the end, uh, it has been locked again. And, you know, he's made millions of dollars on that, that little, you know, scam? declaration of, well, yeah, I mean, it's not really a scam. But he got, um, you know, he provides a legitimate service. that Racket? Uh, yeah. uh, hustle what's the word hustle. i'm looking for uh, yeah i don't yeah. know i mean I, I i don't see what they what they really do for you i i think don't they 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 claim like the, they'll give you money or something if you get compromised or something to that effect i forget yeah. what it well, was, I, but, I it, but i thought it takes like an act of congress to actually get your money you know get anything out of them I'd heard that they're not yeah. really good on paying and stuff. And pretty much thanks to all of these breaches that we've had, pretty much every American has free credit reporting for life. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah, like, I, great. I've got it through, I've got it through three different places. I've got mm -hmm. it from somebody who got compromised. I don't remember who that was now, 
and then I've got it through AAA, and then I pay for uh, Xander Insurance. So, you know, yeah, and I live in Massachusetts, so I'm entitled to a free credit report every year. And, yeah. um, and I have gone through the, the process to lock down my, um, my uh, credit freeze. You know, it froze all my credit, which is a pain because, you know, I, like, I still have to pay money to unfreeze it with, with at least one of the, the services. And yeah. uh, I don't remember if we talked about this before, but I, for instance, wanted to get a new iPhone. When I went to get my iPhone 8, I wanted to enroll in their upgrade plan and do it you know so that i always get the newest phone every year from apple and i failed they didn't they didn't approve it to me because they couldn't pull my credit because i had a credit freeze <laughs> and they didn't tell me that they just said your application has been denied mr nicolaitis and i was like i just paid a freaking house i was just approved for like this huge <laughs> home equity line of credit from mind you the same bank that apple finances their phones through. <laughs> I was like, you'd give me all that money at you know, the drop of a hat, but you won't give me this lot. I was like, wait a minute. They'd give me all that money at the drop of the hat. I, I, don't, I don't need this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so what else we got? So we got, um, oh, I got to pull my notes here. <laughs> Boogie so boarding? You, you got your, yeah, you got your, uh, you got your awards, so that's good. Uh, so the beach, well, I was going to say the beach weather is great here. Uh, as far as the normal weather, I mean, this is this is perfect. It's it's low 90s. The wind is gone. The waves are gone. The waves are really big for here right now. They're big enough to boogie board. And uh, I mean, you know what the boogie board is. I do. I mean, it's like that. Yeah, that little body board, foam, and a little surfboard. Straight. It's a it's a surfboard. It's a nerf board. Yeah, but you know, I am, I, I've still, I guess I've probably got another decade of boogie board riding in me, but, uh, you know, it hurts now, you know, when you get slammed, I mean, because you don't always win every time, you know, you bang your knees sometimes, sometimes your, your back gets arched up a little bit while you're coming in on the waves and, you know, you go head first over the way, you know, I got, I got clobbered twice by waves today because they were just big enough, I'm like, yeah. I'll probably do this for another 10 years and then I'll be like, it's not worth it. <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's like full contact boogie boarding, huh? Yeah. But I mean, it, but it's, but it's been great as far as the, cause they don't normally get waves like this here. They're usually like so mild that you, you know, you might catch one or two good waves. And the only time you get good waves, like what we're getting right now is during a hurricane or storm season. And there's no real storm. It's not really windy, but, we got good waves, so it's nice. Good, good. So, and then, <laughs> so we had, so last night, uh, my friend, we're, we're come, we come down here with a, another family, friends of ours, and and so the uh, they actually, so my wife, Elizabeth, and Laura and Clay, and Clay is actually the voice of our um, of our intro and outro for the yes. podcast. So uh, Clay. Uh, Clay and I went out to the beach with the kids last night at dark. They wanted to go to the beach in the dark. And I see something in the water, something floating in the water. And I said to Clay, I said, uh, you see that out there? And he's like, uh, I don't know. I don't see anything. And took, it took me a little while to get him to see what I was seeing. But once he saw it, he's like, yeah, there's something. He's like, is it a pelican? Or I said, it's like a bobber or something. It's going up and down. Well, it was a woman out in the water, you know, not very far out, but it's in the water. And then I was, then we both were like, oh man, so we've been shining a light on this woman who's trying to swim in the water at night. I'm like, well, but that doesn't make good sense. You know, we need to find out if she's okay. If she's fine, then, you know, we'll just stop shining the light on her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> So, and she came up out of the water and she didn't have anything nice to say. And then she, <laughs> then she dove back into the water. And at this point, we realized we have a dilemma because she's clearly inebriated, drunk, something. You know, she's, she's not 
you know, in a sober state. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do? I mean, we, we both were like, okay, we can call the police. We can walk away and say a prayer for the lady and hope she does well. And like, we couldn't do that. Dive you know, in after just, her. Yeah, could could dive in after her. Some And so we, we actually, he went up to go talk to some other people to see if they knew anything about her because maybe she was with them and you know like hey you know let's get her out of the water because i mean you can't just go into the a person is in the water you can't just go in and drag them out i mean i i'm sure that they're that's like assault or something yeah. i don't know yeah <laughs> unwillingly drug out uh so so i was like okay well you go talk to them i'm gonna look up the phone number for the police department because i didn't want to call 911 because it wasn't a emergency situation yet i mean she wasn't in trouble but we also didn't want to just leave her out there and didn't so yeah. we ended up calling i was getting ready to call the police and somebody else had actually already called the police no, there while you. i was digging yeah so i was digging out the number that the police came down in the four-wheelers and you know the other people that we were talking to were like well she's going to jail tonight i'm like well uh if she goes to jail, she'll be alive. You know, if she stays out there drunk. She will be in the paper tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Spend the you night know, in the drunk tank. And they were actually kind of cool about it. The two cops that came out there, they came out, talked to her. She came out of the water. She and her drunk person, whoever she was, he was, you know, he was drunk. She was drunk. Oh, what a great we, combination. You know, what two a great combination. <laughs> So they, they got clothes on her. I mean, she wasn't nude, but she was in her undergarments. I mean, swimming, uh, which is not really much different than most bathing suits. I was going to say, um, can you tell the difference? I, don't know. I, I actually couldn't tell the difference. I didn't know. I mean, the only reason I knew that she was in her undergarments was because when she came out, she covered herself. Like, she, she, I was like, okay, well, it looks like a bathing suit. But, but anyway, uh, but they were kind of cool and that they told them, you know, y'all go home and they kind of got their stuff together and left. So, I mean, they could have taken them to jail mm -hmm. for public intoxication. I mean, not that they're kind of loose down here as far uh -huh. as hey, you're in Florida, on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking on the beach. But you know, it's like if you're going to have a beer and you're going to, you know, use a can, not glass. So you don't break it and hurt somebody. And, you're not drinking to an excess. Most of the time, the police are just gonna, you know, y'all have a good evening. Be careful. Right. Don't drive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> walk back. To, walk back to your hotel. Have a good evening. Don't drive. Don't swim. Don't you know? Don't be stupid. Yep. And they they had gone over to the stupid side. So. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the stupid side. We have liquor. Yeah. You know, but what's funny is, you know, I wouldn't have expected where we're staying is family is it, or, you know, this is the family side of things. It's right. not the uh, people don't come here to get drunk and party. <laughs> oh, come on. You're a family man. You must have been pressure, pressured to drink at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But I don't usually hang out with the family people while you're doing that you go go down the strip to you know destin you know panama city to <laughs> you know where there are young people yeah, youngins. <laughs> youngins all right we need to move good. things we need to move things yes, along a little bit here so mm -hmm. um why don't we hop straight over to my thing we've talked about your network uh, your uh, beach adventure um mm -hmm. i was going to say save this but i want to talk about this while it's still fresh in my mind mm -hmm little bit of network security 101 or internet security 101 mm -hmm. and this pertains well it could pertain pertain to anything um, but there's there's a few principles in security and not just network security not just information technology security but you know this thing this goes back as far as like castles and yeah. you know um, one of the principles is called least privilege Right. And it's, you know, only allowing access to things when it's actually required. The example that I have today for you, dear listener, is publicly hosted websites and 
who needs access to those? So for a number of my clients this past week and all of my own websites, I have disabled access from the top countries around the world that have been attacking them. <laughs> and so we have firewall rules. We have a number of firewall rules like based on behavior. So if we see brute force attempts coming from a certain IP, then we <laughs> drop them, you know, just boom, drop all country, uh, all, all traffic. Um, I've supplemented that now proactively just saying for and it's not all of our websites, but the majority of them. Uh, if you are traffic coming from uh, Bulgaria, China, Iran, North Korea, South Korea, Russia, or Turkey, we're blocking you. Yeah. We have no business going on in any of those countries. None of these websites that we're hosting have anything. So we just turned this on. You know, we're just like, we don't need anything. And just watching the firewall logs, I'm just seeing constant, you know, like country block, China, Russia, probing, Russia, Russia, China, China, Russia, drop, 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 drop. So, um, because the problem was, was, you know, like I would review our logs and stuff and every day, like, oh, there, here's a hundred failed login attempts from this country. Here's a hundred failed login attempts from over here. And, you know, we have protections which say, okay, well, if you've tried 30 times or, you know, whatever, you know, five, five times in the span of one minute, you're locked out for two hours. But despite that, we're still getting tons of attacks coming from the same block. So like, they just, they just don't let up. These are robots. They're just, you know, yeah. Go, go attack, go attack, go attack. So I just made this executive decision and you know, notify their clients and just say, hey, we're turning these things off. Because think about it, you know, if you're not doing any business with them, you don't need to have it. And think about like your home router, right? Your home router is probably getting pounded on constantly with people, you know, hackers and robots trying to get in. You can enable country blocking. I would say most of our listeners could probably enable country blocking for every country except the United States and yeah. cut down on a lot of traffic and possibly even speed up your internet connection as a result of that because you're not taking the time to serve up the login page for you know your, your router every time. It's just like, where are you? Russia? Done. As opposed yeah. to, oh, you're from Russia? Okay, cool. Um, what do you want? Oh, you wanted my homepage, my login page? Okay, well, let me render that. Okay, hold on. Okay, I got it all. All right, here it is. What do you think? Did you get all that? You got it? Okay, that's good. Now you're trying to log in? Let me try it. What's that username? Oh, okay, hold on. No, that doesn't write. What's that? Oh, try another password. What? Oh, okay. No, hang on. Oh, no, nope, that's not right either. You want to keep trying? I got all day. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, just yeah. you know, simple thing. So I turned that on. and um, And then while I was at it, I noticed that um, I had some additional um, uh, security tools available to, to me uh, as part of this subscription that we had. And there are a slew of different WordPress security plugins and my hosting, like not unlike most of the internet, the majority of it you know, is, is WordPress. And uh, so we have some tools to help us maintain it. So we had normally used a, a security plugin, but this other one that we were able to find, uh, this package includes several others. And, you know, so some of the tops pack, like the top four or five, I think are like uh, bulletproof security, iTheme security, word fence, and, um, oh goodness, security. You know, so you, if you've run WordPress, if you've ever looked at any sort of security options, those you've probably come across at least those four or five. So I had this option to deploy it and I was playing with it on a couple of our servers and we turned it on and everything was fine for a while. And then like a day or so later, and this is after I had turned on the country blocking stuff, performance on this server just went to the tank. And like, for example, the load average, that's a statistical average of different, you know, things like CPU and disk and uh, memory usage and stuff on a Linux system on my servers usually is under one. So it's a fraction. By the time my server crashed on me a couple of days ago, it was 125. <laughs> so it was bad. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because everything was fine for some time. And then just randomly stuff started happening. And this was not unlike uh, some stuff that I had gone through a couple of years ago when the exact same thing was happening. 
just randomly the server would just spike. All the resources would just get sucked dry and you know, bring the whole server to its knees. And then a friend of mine was taking a look at it and you know, we made two tiny little tweaks and one of those was yanking all the security programs off. Uh -huh. And then at leaving it for a while, everything was fine. And then we put back one. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood, it's been very quiet ever since. <laughs> <laughs> now the trick sure. is though, like out of those scanners, there are, they, some of them have a lot of overlap in features, but some of them have unique features. So it's, you know, think of it sort of like, it's not exactly the same, but, but uh, like on your desktop antivirus, for instance, you might have one that includes a firewall, one that includes a pop-up blocker, one that includes ransomware protections and one that includes signature based antivirus, mm -hmm. right? And then you have a couple of them that might have two out of three of those features. So if you have like one plugin acting as your web, uh, your, um, your, your firewall and as your ransomware protection, you'd probably be okay having another one serve as your signature based antivirus. Mm -hmm but you probably don't want two signature based antiviruses because they can start causing problems. Most notably, they can start detecting each other. <laughs> so that's really bad because, you know, program A says, you know, like, well, I'm looking for, you know, like ABC bad program and program B looks over and says, did you just say ABC bad program? Your virus, I'm quarantining you. <laughs> and they yeah. get into this fight, and so you know, there, there a lot. I'm, I'm simplifying things again, as is my nature. But um, anyway, so that was um, that was a, a, a stressful evening that I brought on myself, <laughs> and I was glad that when that was over. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So you're saying that uh, you could do in WordPress, you could do do the geofencing in there as uh, a plugin. Okay. Well, yes. Now that's not the way I was doing it, right. but for example, um, WordFence has a uh, an option in their in their firewall and their web application firewall. They will block based on IP address or country or whatever you want. So that could be really good for uh, for users who do not who are in shared hosting space. Yeah, they've got a website. It's set up for WordPress, but they don't have any control over the server. Correct. They could install that plugin and protect their website. That is correct. Now, yeah. now that's not the way I started it. So, like, I'm looking now. I, I did it on um, IP tables, and it uh, essentially once a week the server goes out and pulls down the latest list of um, you know geo IP codes. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect. You know, it's not going to catch everything. Uh, and yeah. you have false positives and stuff, but it's a, it's a risk I'm willing to take by and large. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, theoretically, I'm blocking all traffic from Turkey in my IP tables firewall. But uh, when I look at one of my clients website right now, I see traffic from like less than an hour ago um, coming from Turkey trying to attack you know, log into the hack, basically brute forcing their WordPress login page. Yeah. Now, the good thing on top of that is the WordPress login page is secured by two factor authentication. So you have to have, you know, the password and the, you know, a duo push notification device like cell phone or something. So I'm not as worried about that. But again, it's bandwidth. You know, it's chewing up. And if you're using a service where you have to pay for bandwidth, and even if you don't, I do have bandwidth limits on this hosting mm -hmm. provider. I don't usually go anywhere near them, you know, because I, I oversubscribe, but it's it's costing somebody something. So yeah. if I can make the, you know, a hacker or a, a, a malicious robot's life miserable, I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah, but, it, you know, in the, rather than, for the end user or for somebody who's using a service somewhere else, it would really be better for the hosting service to block this stuff for them rather than them having to block it on their sure. website. But let's say but, for example, you know, if, if for example, your company and my company are using the same shared hosting provider 
and you, you say, hey, I don't do business in Russia. I'm going to have no, you know, I want you hosting provider to block Russia. And I'm saying, wait a minute. They're my I best like customer. <laughs> they're, they're great. I do a lot of business in Russia. You know, don't, don't block me. Um, that's not going to fly. Right. So yeah. most hosting providers are probably not going to do this. They're probably going to say, yeah, sure. We're wide open. Or, you know, you have to buy your own virtual server and do your own work, in which case you're not using shared hosting anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's understandable. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh, I shoot. I had another question for you, but it, it's gone. <laughs> I'll give you a second if you want. Okay. You, can edit, you can edit this out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I should have. I should have took it, taken it down. Well, if you remember so, it, we can add it, uh, edit it, and splice it back into the audio feed later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, cool. So, um, so I guess we're we're ready to move to our nifty. Yes. And you have two nifties. I do. I, I'm going to just do one of them this time. Uh, again, okay. while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, just yesterday, I had my electrician here to install my outdoor security cameras. Mm -hmm. And I've had the indoor model for some time now. And then they announced as a, you know, like a Kickstarter kind of thing. Um, you know, if you were an early adopter, you would buy it at a super discounted rate. Um, so I went with the Sense8 um, security cameras. And they make two. There's an indoor model and an outdoor model. And uh, the reason I chose them over things like the Ring video doorbell or Simply Safe or you know a bunch of these others is that they do not they, they neither require nor offer a subscription to store your data. They have oh, okay. on, they have onboard storage and they will store it to either Dropbox or your Google Drive. So since I have those and I have copious space on my, you know, my Google, my, well, both of them, I figured that was better. So that way, yeah. you know, and, and that way I can control it. It's, um, you know, the relationship is with customers that or you know, with companies that I already have, you know, they already have my data. So it's not yet another company. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I set that up and it's working just great. Um, cloud storage. Yeah, it's basically Dropbox or, or Google Drive. Those are the two options. And um, yeah, it, it's working fine. My uh, electrician was here yesterday and he had to, um, you know, drill a hole through the wall and mounted it, but he did a really decent job hiding the wires. And um, what's nice about the, um, the light cam is it has a very bright uh, floodlight as well as the camera. And okay. This is nice because my outdoor lights, I don't have, there are different, they're different sized fixtures. So I couldn't put my regular old smart light bulbs in there. Because okay. I like those, because I like the kind that, you know, turns on when I come home, turns off when I go away, but doesn't just turn on all the time, right? Right. Well, these guys have motion sensors. And, um, you know, so I, I turn it on and, and with the, um, the motion sensor, you can tell it, you, you drag a little outline on the picture as to where you want to look for motion. So yeah. if something walks by on the street, it's not going to set off the floodlight. But if you take a step onto my stairs, it will. And yeah. it, so that actually fit, you know, fit the bill and fix two things because out back, my, um, my back little uh, light, A, when it did work, was, um, was kind of dull and very dim. And B, mm -hmm. stopped working last year. So now I've killed two birds with one stone. And so it's, it's pretty handy. So that way that's nice though, too, is because out front, you know, if I wanted to have the light home on when I came home, I had to always leave the light on. There was no automation. there. So yeah. now I can, you know, turn it on automatically or just have it, you know, on a, um, I can control it with the app and it's got the same functionality. It has microphone and it has a speaker and it has an alarm. So if I see somebody out on the front porch, I can like, you know, yeah, just leave the package there or, you know, like get off my lawn, you know, something like that. So, <laughs> you kids get off my grass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's not my grass. It's the <laughs> Department of Conservation and Recreations, but still. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a nifty little thing. The Sensate uh, light cam and what's the other one called now? I forget. Um, the outdoor one is the light cam and the indoor one is called the all-in-one. 
Um, and the other cool thing about the all-in-one is it has a small amount of built-in storage and a battery. So oh, when, cool. when my maid comes over and unplugs the camera so she can plug in her vacuum cleaner, I see the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, there you go. So meanwhile, Russia and China continue to be blocked. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, how can they read your camera if you block them? I don't know. They're clever, those <laughs> Russian hackers. <laughs> yeah, very clever people. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's about all I have. How about you? Yep. Yep. It was a successful podcast from the beach. We didn't have oodles of technology issues or whatever i would say is you know pretty technology work well technology work well cool well let's wrap it up then and i will do the honors since you opened us so okay um, okay if you have any feedback we do want to hear it um corrections may be sent to adam at blurring the lines podcast.com um criticism as well praise and uh, constructive feedback can be sent to peter that's fine um Seriously, though, blurringthelinespodcast.com. You can contact us there. And um, if you want to know more about Adam, he is at sublimecomp.com. He's also showing, those of you who are watching the video feed, a great view of, uh, of the non-isthmus. <laughs> the <Pentagon> yeah. Form, <laughs> yes. And if you want to find out more about me, I am at uh, paradigmcc.com. That's hard to spell, so it's easier to find me at my personal website, which is nicolaitis.com. Wait, that's hard to spell too. Um, you can find me at my yoga <laughs> website, which is yogawithpeter.com. That's easy. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, there you go. That's that. We've got a great uh, episode planned. Are we taking one more week off next week because of uh, something? Something's going on. I'm gone next week, I think. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in Michigan. I'll All be right. moving an office. Gotcha. I'll be closer to you than I normally am. Excellent. All right. So we're taking another week off there, but we will be back after that. And in the meantime, I think it's probably time for me to push the big red baton. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Well, cool. Good. Fun catching up as always. Let's see. Recording. Stop. Oh. To contact either us or our guests, visit BlurringTheLinesPodcast.com. If you like what you're hearing, do us a solid and subscribe to our podcast and leave us a five-star review in iTunes, Google Play Store, or wherever you found us.